you almost never feel pain in the muscles in the front of your neck. No matter how tight they are, no matter how many problems they're causing, no matter how unhappy they are, but they can cause a lot, a lot of mischief. And I'm going to go over some of the things that they cause. And just because you may not have all these symptoms, just remember a lot of people just have one or two of them uh, if these muscles are tight. And you may not even feel anything in them, but if you're doing activities that cause these problems to occur, uh, you're very likely to have tight muscles. And it's a good thing to loosen them up, even if they're not causing you problems yet. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the sternocleidomastoid. I know that's a big mouthful for me to say, SEM for short. And this one does not cause numbness in the carpal tunnel area or numbness in your fingers, whatever, but it does cause problems and it is associated with these other muscles here, the scalene muscles, which can cause false carpal tunnel syndrome along with many, many other problems that are often misdiagnosed. So the first one, the sternocleidomastoid, SCM, is a muscle that turns your head. It's, if you can see the one that sticks out, or if you're looking at someone else, there's this muscle that sticks out when they turn their head to the side. It goes from the sternum and the collarbone, kind of the edge of there, sterno meaning uh, the sternum and clido, the collarbone, it, just to the edge of that, and it goes to the mastoid muscle way back up there below your ear, and it's attached to the jawbone there. And some people think it's a swollen gland. If you touch your muscles down here by your collarbone and turn your head, you'll feel that thing just uh, contracting as you turn your head. And the same as up here by your the bottom of your ear, uh, the top of your jaw, upper end of your jaw. And some people think that's a swollen gland, but if you're turning your your neck and you feel the muscle contract and uncontract, you know, whatever. Uh, that's not a swollen gland, that's this muscle. And what can it do when it's unhappy? Well, as I said, it's a turning muscle. The muscle on, for example, uh, the left, which I don't know which side you're looking at here in the camera, but uh, it will turn your head in the opposite direction that it is. So this muscle here will turn my head that way and it'll work with the muscles on the opposite side in the back, the trapezius muscles. So what can this muscle do that's so terrible? Well, a common thing that it does is cause jaw pain. If you have TMJ, if you're grinding your teeth, oftentimes, very oftentimes, this muscle is involved. If you have headaches, whether they come and go or not, in the front of your head up here, sometimes on the top of your head, sometimes right behind the ears, this muscle. Occasionally they cause earaches, and I've even heard it documented that in some person they caused total hearing loss, and that, but working on these muscles regain their hearing, which is quite freaky actually. Uh, other things they can do, uh, if you know someone who has sinus problems, but they don't show up uh, in a medical test or no me medicine helps, oftentimes it's this muscle because uh, it won't show up in a blood test. Often doctors are not looking for tight muscles as a cause of sinus problems. One of the more common problems of tight muscles here in the sternocleidomastoid is turning of the neck. If your neck is stiff in one of these directions, this is a very likely cause. Another problem they can cause is dizziness or vertigo. Another thing they can cause is a dry cough. If you're coughing but there's no phlegm, there's nothing coming up, but it's just a dry cough, probably this muscle. And what causes these muscles to be tight? Well, a common thing is whiplash if you're in a <laughs> car accident, but not just that, but sports. If you took a rumble tumble in football or skiing or bicycling or whatever, or just falling down the steps or slipping on the ice, you can cause yourself a little whiplash. <laughs> and uh, it's a turning muscle, so if you sleep with your uh, your head down, face down, and you've got your 
head turned to one side, that can be a cause. If you're in an occupation where you're doing a lot of turning behind you, uh, for example, farmers looking behind their tractor to see if their seeds are going in right or their furrows are straight or whatever, or anything else where you're turning your head and looking behind. Even secretaries, if they're typing on the keyboard straight in front of them, but they have to look off to the side to either listen to somebody or watch something else or, or whatever, where they're doing their touch typing, uh, and they keep their head turned a lot, that's another thing. Swimmers, if they're doing rhythmic breathing on one side, that's another cause. But anyway, it's a turning muscle. And now I'll talk about the really nasty ones, which are the scalene muscles. Again, you almost never feel pain in these things until somebody pushes on them, or, you're, or you push on them yourself. And when I was a massage therapist, that, <laughs> that idiot would be me. Some of the nasty things that these muscles can do, first of all, reason why, is because these muscles come from the side of your neck. There's th usually three muscles on each side. Some people have four. And they go down under your collarbone and attach the first and second rib. So underneath there goes the nerves that go down into your arm. Also, they innervate the shoulder as well. The blood supply for the shoulder and the arm and the fingers and the vein that brings the blood back. So if there's any constriction in any one of those, you're going to have problems. So a very common misdiagnosed thing for false carpal tunnel syndrome is the tight muscles of the scleans. Also because they can constrict the vein, uh, they can cause swelling in the hand. And that can lead to false readings uh, if a nerve conductivity test because the blood supply is sluggish, they're swelling in the hands, and that causes increased uh, volume in the carpal tunnel, and that can lead to false readings as well. They can pinch off the blood supply, the artery uh, going into your shoulder and the arm, which causes weakness, causes cold fingers, um, and these muscles, the scalenes, can, they can cause shoulder pain, they can cause pain in the arm, pain in the wrist, uh, pain in the fingers, numbness, you name it. Uh, <laughs> they can do it. Among the other nasty stuff they can do is they can cause pain in the front of the chest. And so you've heard of people, they think they're having a heart attack and they go to the hospital as they should. And the EKG says there's nothing wrong with them. So they send them home and they're back in the hospital again with chest pains and they get sent back home again because there's nothing wrong and the doctor says it's all in their head. Well, it's usually all in the neck or the chest. And it's not just the scalenes that can do that, but also a tight pectoralis minor muscle and a tight uh, pectoralis major muscle. And if you feel along the edge of the sternum here, uh, you can work on that yourself to help release the pectoralis major muscle. And, and in the program I've already talked about the pectoralis minor problems, which that pectoralis minor can, can be a major pain. But anyway, they can also refer pain uh, to the back, to you know, kind of the edge of the shoulder blade in the back. <laughs> so, not very nice muscles. So what causes the scleans to be tight? Well, again, whiplash is a big one from falls and tumbles and car accidents and whatnot. So a big cause that didn't even exist when I started making these videos back in 2009 is uh, tablets. They didn't exist then. These things have great technology. I'm not disputing that. The technology is amazing what these things can do. But you've got an epidemic of problems coming up in the future of more and more people having problems in the front of their neck because, or actually the whole neck, because their head's down so much. Looking at smartphones, looking at tablets, looking at PCs, not so much PCs, but laptops. Uh, anytime the keyboard and the, and the screen are close together and you're looking down on them, these poor muscles get shorter. And, and tighter, and the muscles in the back of the neck 
they have to compensate for the gravity because your neck is not centered and your head weighs about the same as a bowling ball. So uh, I forget the exponential amount of pounds you're putting on your neck by having a head forward. And these muscles in the back of your neck have to be constantly working. And in order to compensate themselves for constantly working, they start getting knots and the knots shorten up uh, or tighten up the muscles in the back so they don't have to work so hard. So that's causing you pain in the back of the neck. So you feel the pain in the back of the neck, but you don't feel the pain in the front of the neck. For some reason, these muscles are just bullies and you don't feel the pain there till some idiot like me or idiot like yourself, <laughs> you should feel them, um, pushes on there. Another cause of tight muscles in the scleens and sometimes also the pectoralis minor muscle is because they're attached to the ribs, they're involved in breathing, especially chest breathing, upper breathing. So if you're breathing hard, uh, you're anxious uh, and you hold your ribs up tight, uh, or you're breathing hard, you're, you, you're running, <sighs> You play in the tuba, boom, boom, boom. <sighs> you know, you're, you're struggling to gain your breath. Instead of belly breathing, you're rib breathing. And if you want to calm down, if you want to be relaxed, you want to breathe through your belly. Let the belly go up and down um, or in and out, depending whether you're laying down or standing up. And just breathe slowly, deep belly breaths and that relaxes the anxiety, makes you calmer, makes you more relaxed, easier to go to sleep, and, uh, and so forth. <laughs> if you've been diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome, that's almost always the scalene muscles. It can include the pectoralis minor muscle too, but definitely the scalene muscles. And the reason there's so many different possible side effects with these muscles is Anatomy is not the same in everybody. Anatomy varies. For example, one person might have three scleen muscles on each side, another person might have four, but also the way that the blood vessels and the nerves go. For example, picture your nerves as being like electric wires, and picture your blood vessels as being like little hydraulic tubes, and if there was a mechanic that could take these parts out and put them back in, chances are they wouldn't go back in exactly the same way even if they function the way they should. So when these muscles are tight and they pull up on the ribs, they can be affecting different people differently. And uh, a lot of uh, massage therapists never learn about the mischief that the scleens cause. In fact, they might not even be taught how to work on the scleens because people are afraid of the front of the neck because of because there's juggler veins and carotid arteries, but it's really pretty safe because in between the two sternocleidomastoids, there's a triangle here, which uh, that's where you don't want to be. <laughs> but the scleens are outside of that. And uh, in the next video, I'll tell you how to work on those scleens, how to work on the sternocleidomastoids, and do it safely. And uh, you may be amazed at the what a difference it'll make.